Uh, hi, uh, am I audible properly? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the session uh, of week three. Uh, uh, yesterday, we have summarized the concepts of week three, I mean, the concept of K means, and we have left to the last concept uh, of the convergence proof of the convergence. And in this session, we will start. Uh, by proving that part, and then we'll go for the open session where uh, we'll take your questions and try to solve those questions. Okay, so I hope everyone has gone through whatever have been taught yesterday or have gone through the lecture. So uh, let's get it started there, and then we'll move to the open open session. Okay, so should we start now? Yes, sir. Please. Okay. Okay. So. Let me share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, yeah. So, yesterday we have seen the K means algorithm. We have started, uh, we say what, uh, what is clustering, then we have started uh, what do we mean by parties in the data set. And we are following the same notations like uh, we have n data points and we want to partition into K different groups mm -hmm. or K different partitions. And then we have seen a better algorithm, which is called Lloyd algorithm, or popularly known as k-means algorithm. Uh, it's a pretty simple algorithm. We start with some k. Uh, we already know how many partitions we want to have in our data set. And then we'll choose those centroids, then assign every data points to those centroids, uh, depending upon which, one, uh, which cluster it is uh, at minimum distance. And then we again find the uh, centroid, I mean, we, we uh, redo the same procedure again and again till uh, every point is happy with its own cluster. And then uh, we have done, we have seen some examples, and then we'll go uh, the more formal ways to define those algorithms where we have used some notations here. And then we have seen that it's actually we are minimizing the distance. We want the data points to be. We want cluster in such a way that the closer points come into one uh, one cluster, and the the points which are far away goes into different clusters. Like uh, so, we are actually minimizing this uh, uh, this objective function, and we have seen that the uh, this algorithm will be affected by the the final clusters may be affected by the initializations, right? And different initializations uh, may lead to different clusters. And we have seen how to overcome this problem. We have seen some better way to initialize your cluster. Uh, your centroids, and then we uh, that leads to a different algorithm which is called k means plus plus, right? And then we have seen how to choose k because beforehand we never know what value of k will uh, will be uh, good for our data set and to how to choose that value of k. Uh, uh, then we have seen, uh, <coughs> yeah. So we have seen that how to choose k. Uh, one possible way to do that, we just uh, apply uh, different values. We just see, uh, we choose different values of k and apply algorithm and see uh, which value of k will give me the uh, least, uh, not least, just uh, the better ob objective function value and that we call as the elbow method, right? And we have seen the effect of k as well on the data set. And one way to find uh, the k value is to penalize the objective function and then uh based on the objective function value we choose the k value k uh, suitable k value right uh, another things that we have seen in the nature of clusters we have seen that the the decision boundary or say the partitions are actually a linear uh, is a linear function right as a linear boundary 
so that is a hyperplane in the dimensional space so we have also seen that because the uh, partitions are the uh, linear uh, linear uh, linear uh, linear in the in the feature so the data set which are not which have the cluster which are not linearly separable cannot be uh, cannot be partitioned using this algorithm and uh, such example of this concentric centers where the natural clusters cannot be partitioned using a linear function linear function right so there we have a different algorithm we move into the higher dimension using kernel k means and it is generally called spectral clustering that is beyond our course so we are not going to see that but if you are interested you can read about it right and the last part that we didn't do is the convergence we say that algorithm converges when every point is happy with its own cluster it means there's no change in the objective function when we uh, reassign or there is no reassignment or say the, the clusters mean doesn't change after the iteration we stop at the iteration where the uh, clusters means doesn't change or the any any point doesn't get reassigned so that is what convergence means but does the this algorithm converges so that we haven't seen right so proof of that we are going to see it. yeah okay so before going to the proof let's let's again revisit those notations we have already defined the yesterday session but for the convenience uh, let's again define those okay so we have the data set uh, we have we have n data points let's call them x1 to xn and these are the d dimensional data points are coming from the arc d now we define some function the indicator function or the cluster indicator function which are denoted by z z1 to zn so these are end distinct indicator function all corresponding to the is data point so z1 corresponds to x1 zn correspond to the end of data point xn and these are nothing but the clusters uh, which cluster that data point belongs to if i talk about zi so it it actually gives the value it gives the index of the cluster in which the xi data points lie okay so let's end uh, the super uh, skip to those data points knows the uh, the iteration number at which iteration we are talking about if i talk about zi0 it means that in the initialization step they are the very first data point belongs to which cluster it goes to so this can... hello sir yes sir why the number of z and number of uh, data point are same because number of clusters should be less than the number of uh, data points yeah of course the number of cluster the k can all can cannot be greater than n right because we want to partition into k different groups if there are only n data points then how we can uh, partition into more than k groups no, in the diagram in the diagram x1 maps to z1 and xn maps to zn that means number of data point and number of cluster are same no 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 uh, these uh, these values the values that zi can take are from 1 to k okay it means uh, assume that you want to k you have three chosen as three and you have 10 data points x1 to x10 right so in the initialized step step let t equal to 0 z1 maybe 1 z2 maybe 1 so these two can these two belongs to cluster 1 or z3 again 1 z4 is 1 so all these four points belongs to cluster 1 cluster 1 c1 and if uh, x10 z10 z Eight, gen nine values. Let's say this is three. So it means that the ten point, the eight point, and the nine point belongs to cluster three. Can you please mute your? Yeah, thank you. So, so it actually gives the index number where the i data point belongs. So, uh, this is notation we are following. Zi means that the uh, cluster in which i data point lies. Uh, sir, right. a small, a small confusion here, sir. Hmm? Like Jedi is the cluster index, now You said. Yeah, cluster. A cluster index. So uh, a particular point can belong to that particular cluster. Say, for example, uh, we are initiating. We are, you know, starting with three clusters. Say, for example, right. Hmm? So now Z will be Z one, Z two, and Z three. Correct. No, no. Z one actually they are the function corresponding to each data point. So we, if there are n data points, we have such n indicator function. You know, you are written here that Z1 belongs to 1 to K. This, this line is clear that, say, for example, there are N points, right? Yes. There are total N points of K. K cannot be greater than N. K should be less than or equal to N, right? Am I right? Yes. 
yeah yeah right and now then you said that z1 is j, means basically the z is basically the cluster index index number of cluster right a cluster so number saying, say for example there are three clusters so there will be z1 z2 and z3 no 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 ganga prasad just think of it as a yeah. table x i mean there is column 1 and column 2 column 1 is having all the values of x1 to xn don't look at it as an array right now just take it as a value z second column will only have as you said 1 2 or 3 for each value of x there will be only 1 2 or 3 like i'm putting this x one of i have three bins i put it, the x is in one yeah, of the sir, bins those three bins which, are z1 z2 and z3 right those three no, bins no, are no, z1 no. Z2. bins are not that that is the way you are actually saying but when you actually put it in a column and you see the columns if you say second column is only representing my bins it will be 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2. I mean, the second column will have only values ranging from 1, 2, 3. That's all. Think of it as not a bin. Think of it as two columns. One carrying the values of X, other carrying the values of Z. That's all. I will try to comprehend again, sir. Okay, okay. Let me, let me... Yeah, you can throw some more light then that will be better. Okay, Thanks. I think, I think Z1 is a mapping function between... A data point and cluster. Yeah, yeah, of course. So let me let me explain it in different way. Let's let's you have ten data points, n equal to ten, right? And you want k equal to three. You want the three cluster in your data set, right? Now your data points are x one, x two, x three, up to x ten, right? Now Correct. now at t any t iterations, okay? It can be anything, it t one, t zero, or whatever. Any iterations, this x one data points belongs to cluster one. You have three cluster. I'm naming as this cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, right? So this is C, uh, just I'm indexing those clusters, C1, C2, C3, or just saying the cluster one, cluster two, and cluster three, right? Okay, so uh, at, at TS iteration, I'm saying X1 belongs to cluster one, X2 belongs to cluster two, X3 belongs to cluster one, X4 belongs to cluster two, X, X3, uh, or let me write all X5, X6, X7, X8, X9, X10. Right. X5 belongs to cluster 1, X6 belongs to cluster 3, this belongs to cluster 3, this belongs to cluster 2, this belongs to cluster 2, this belongs to cluster 1, right? This, uh, these are the clusters I have at, at tier 3. Right, right, sir. Three clusters, yeah. This value I'm calling as Z1, this value I'm calling as Z2, this value I'm calling as Z3. So, so corresponding to every data points, I have an indicator function, which actually gives me at tier iteration, so subscript I can write here as the which iteration I'm talking about. So this indicator function tells me in which it in which cluster my first data point goes. If I talk about this, this is my Z60. It it yeah. tells so, me. So, so say for example in first iteration, right now we are doing first iteration. So my X1 is belonging to first cluster, right? Yes. So this value I'm called denoting as Z1T. Okay, and this value is Z10. So for corresponding to every data points, I have an indicator function, which actually gives me in this cluster my data point belongs to. That data point belongs to. Okay. Okay. So for if you have n data points, you have n such indicator function, and every indicator function. So the x10 point is belonging to cluster one, right? So what what Z10 yeah. signifies here? That is the that is the so Z10, Z10 in this case is 1. Should I take a shot at it, sir? Sorry? Uh, should I take uh, 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 yeah. a chance yeah, at trying yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the way I look at it is, uh, uh, let's say there are 10, 10 numbers, points, uh, 10, uh, uh, 10 points, 10 data points. There are right and uh, there are just two buckets uh, let's call them bucket a and bucket b let's not confuse them with numbers so uh, how do i say the 10th the bucket of the 10th point i need some kind of nomenclature for uh, referencing bucket number of the 10th point so z10 is the bucket number uh, uh, th that's the variable name my variable name is z10 it is referencing bucket number a or b one of those two when when I'm solving problems, I, I need to reference the variable name which holds my bucket number, the cluster number. How 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 will I say otherwise the cluster number of point number 10? 
the cl cluster number of point number 10 is held in z10 is uh, i hope uh, i was able to no, yeah, it, it, it is making sense yeah, 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 you are familiar with the concept sir, hello, of pointers sir. in programming hello sir ganga prasad are you yeah, 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 yeah. So, think of it as a pointer mm -hmm. think of it as a pointer the pointer only points to where the x is the pointers will have their own values but the pointers values what they can take are limited from 1 to 3 that's all nothing else I know, so each, this, each know, value has case, a point in this case the example which we took we took three cluster but z is carrying a value 10 also that's what he said now that uh, point number 10 in first no, if you take three it is three Hello, z10 sir. the point 10th point tenth pointer is showing three or the 11th pointer is showing two Hello, sir. Point... Yeah, Sampa, please go on. Sir, can I give a very simple example? Hello. Yes, yeah, sure, Sampa. Uh, uh, sir, if I think that there is a 10 number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10, and if mm -hmm. I mod every number by 2, then 2 mod 1 mod 2, 1. That means it goes to the uh, odd cluster, 2 mod 2, uh, 0. That means it goes to the uh, even, even cluster, 3 mod 2, 1, it goes to the uh, odd cluster, 4 mod 2, 0, goes to the uh, even, cl uh, even cluster. I think, but why, uh, why are you defining such, uh, such a way? Why do you are defining such functions? Hello? You are okay. You are defining the functions like uh, mod function, and you are saying if the index, if the index of data point is ten, and if it is divided by two, then it goes to zero cluster. Then why do you, you are defining? Z value is zero and one. Always z value is zero and one. Always for one to ten, and based on the z value, we define the cluster. I think this is the concept behind this. I know no, 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 wrong. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. Indexing or a data index can be anything. It's not like data always uh, order in some fashion. It's not like that. Z10 is just a data point, and we are denoting it by just X10. It's just a note, notion for a particular data point. Okay, it's not like if this index is 10, then we are uh, uh, that data point should go to cluster two. And we have already seen a algorithm how to assign data points to particular clusters. Okay, so uh, I don't see why you are confused within such notation. It's just as simple, just you have to, as you're saying that it goes to cluster one, right? So that one I'm noting, denoting as that one. Hmm. Okay, let us proceed, sir. So, yeah. so how many of you have problem with such, uh, with these notations? Let me know first that, because if I will proceed to convergence proof of convergence part is actually using those notations. And if those notations are not clear, then that proof will uh, not gonna, uh, is gone. So how many of you are not comfortable with the uh, notations? Can you please raise your hand? I am, I am there since I have asked this question at this point of time. So let me go through that again. So please let me know first, how many of you are not comfortable with the notations, these notations, Z1, Z2. So I can see only one now. So uh, I uh, I assume that all others now understand what those notations mean, right? So far, four hands are there. Okay, four hands. Okay, let me explain it once more. Then we'll go to the uh, proof part. Okay, so anyone who is, I already said you, if you are trying to join using some other ID, personal ID, then I have to admit your, you to in this meeting. So please always try to join using your student ID. Okay.
Yeah. So. So I. The cluster number I'm counting it as ZI. If if my IS data point goes to cluster 10, it means that I'm saying that my ZI value is 10. If if, if my six data points goes to cluster three, then I'm just saying that my Z3 value, what I said, six data points, right? So my Z6 value is three. Whenever whenever I say Z uh, Z10 equal to two, it means that my tenth data point is going to cluster two. Right, and uh, the iterations, iteration number is denoted by the subscript. I've, I'm talking about the tier, tier iteration. Then Z10T denotes that my tier, tenth data point in the tier iteration goes to cluster two. If my ten Z9 uh, value, uh, Z91 value equal to one, it means that my ninth data point in the very first iterations goes to cluster one. Okay, for any for all n such points, we have such n indicator function which denote which in which cluster my n data point going, i data point going. Uh, sir, right? uh, yeah, so it makes sense now. I'm getting something just a small clarification. So, mm -hmm. say for example, just I have written that you know, z you know, nine and to the power one is goes to first cluster, it is nothing but my ninth data point in first mm -hmm. iteration is going to cluster number one, right. Cluster one. So, so what is the necessity to bring one more term over here? Why we cannot simply write H9, you no know, superscript one is going to cluster one. It's just right. a different notation. It's just a different notation for denoting is cluster point. So how, is, help, how is helping for, me there? How is helping for me? X, for X, X I am denoting as a data point. That's why indicator function I am denoting by some different notations there. That's it. Because even if in place of G, I write X9 mm. to the power one, it means ninth data point in first mm. iteration is going to cluster one. It, that is that, that is also making the same sense what Z91 equal to one is making but, the sense. But right? X9 we are denoting as a data point, right? X9 is some data points. Uh, if I talk in two dimensional data points, it's two comma three. Correct, right? correct, nine correct. Is two comma three. So if X9 is this one, then why use the same notice as, uh, why to confuse yourself? With the same notation to denote its cluster point. If I'm saying x9 is equal to one, then uh, I how I know whether I'm pointing to a point or I'm pointing to this cluster number. Understood, sir. So x9 actually denoting your data points, and its cluster is actually I'm denoting by z9. That's it. Right. Okay, fair enough, sir. Now, now. Uh... I will, I okay, let's proceed. If not clear, please go to the let us proceed. Yes, note. Yes, yes. Or, it, it is clear. Yes. It is clear. Now it is clear, sir. Now it's clear, sir. It's clear. Yeah, got it. Okay. Okay. Why is not working? Okay, let me do this. I'm not sure why this is not working now. My razor somehow is not working. Uh, let me do this other way. Let me explain it here only. Okay. 
Okay, now it's okay. Okay. So so now we we are going to the convergence part. And for convergence part, what we will show, uh, we have to show that the number of iterations is t t that we are denoting as the number of iterations in a Lloyd algorithm is a finite number, right? If I I've shown this, that I'm done. Uh, the convergence means that uh, there's only finite number of iterations uh, to converge my algorithm, right? Now to show t t finite, what I will show, I will show that the objective function f for t plus one iteration. Uh, and uh, I'm denoting it as f function. F is my objective function. And for t plus one iteration, I'm showing as z one t plus one uh, up to z and t plus one. This is my objective function at tth iteration. is strictly less than uh, objective function uh, of the tth iteration. Okay. So if I show that, then I'm done. And I'll I'll talk about this later. Once once I saw this, okay, so I will show this strict in inequality between the objective function of tth iterations and t plus one iterations. Okay, so now let's assume we are at tth iterations, and in tth iteration, my i th data point x i is belonging to some uh, and k to k is my total number of uh, k is my total number of clusters in our data set, right? So x i data point. Uh, belongs to cluster u uh, let's say uh, cluster u or cluster k small k okay so the mean of that cluster is mu k in the tth iteration right and uh, now uh, i see that uh, in the next iteration t plus one iteration i see that this x i i is not happy with this cluster k cluster so what will be my z uh, z i t here in this case I'm saying that my in the tth iteration, my i data point belongs to kth cluster. So what is what is the value of z i t in this case? K. K, right? Yeah. It, it denotes the the cluster number which i data point goes in tth iteration. And I'm saying that the x i data point goes to cluster k in tth iteration. So I, can I write mu k t as mu z i t uh, t? Just I'm uh, just replacing k with z i t. Okay, so this point is my this uh, mu z i t over t, right? And uh, in that uh, I see that in that uh, t plus one iteration, this x i point is not happy with this cluster, uh, so it wants to jump into another cluster. Uh, it means that the, the uh, this distance and some other dis distance of this point with some other cluster mean is larger. So it may be case that some other cluster mean, let's call it mu l. So in, it means that that LF, it is nearer to the LF cluster than the uh, kth cluster. It means that in t plus one iteration, it wants to go to LF cluster, right? So what will be the value of z i t plus one? L. L. Because in the t plus one iteration, my i data point wants to go to the LF cluster, right? So can I replace this L with mu t uh, z i t? T, t plus one, I just replace L with this value. Okay. Now, when this point will jump into the uh, LF cluster in T plus one iterations, the mean of L uh, LF cluster will change, right? Because I have added some point or I have yes. removed some point from the LF cluster. So the mean of this cluster will change in the L, L in T plus one iteration, right? So yes. this mean, this mean may some uh, will shift somewhere else, right? So in t plus one iteration, this mu l t plus one will be somewhere here. Let's let's I'm assuming this point is here. Okay. So uh, this was my the mean of kth cluster in tth iteration. This was the mean of l lth cluster in tth iteration, and this is the mean of lth cluster, but in the t plus one iterations, right? And I'm just denoting with the notations corresponding to x i. So this is I'm denoting as mu z i t t. This one I'm denoting as mu z i t plus one t. And this I'm denoting as mu z i t plus one t plus one. Any doubt till this point? Not really a doubt, but just a question. When you say function of uh, z one t plus one mm -hmm. and uh, like y still z and t plus one. Are we referring to uh, xi minus uh, 
new t uh, z i t plus one. This function, uh, this function, I am denoting x i minus. Which one uh, are you pointing? Sorry. Mu z i t plus one. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the function per se will be overall the entire uh, uh, equation on the left side of the inequality, right? Yeah. So this is my uh, objective function at t plus one iteration. So it means that's that, objective function. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is a I at data point, and in t plus one iteration, it belongs to this cluster. So I will take the distance from mean of that cluster, and I will do for all such data points. This will be my the uh, objective function, right? And t and t th iteration, this is just x i minus mu, x i minus x i minus mu z i t, and the distance, right? No, norm two. L to norm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that uh, strict inequality I will show. So this thing is clear. Now tell me, since uh, this x i data points wants to go to LF cluster, it means that this distance, right, is lesser than this distance. Is it clear? Yeah. Because this data point wants to go into LF cluster. So I can write that uh, the distance of x i minus mu, this distance. So this data point is mu z i t in the tth iteration. This distance is greater than distance of x i minus mu z i t plus 1 into t. So this this uh, strict regularity uh, uh, is clear, right? Uh, so that mu t plus one it will be now because now my point will move to other. No, no, I I am not considering the I am not con considering the distance from the updated mean. I just consider consider the distance from the uh, mean of in the tier distance. This data point wants to move into this uh, this cluster because he finds that I am closer to this point, this mean cluster mean. And when it jumps into this point, then the mean will uh, uh, change. Oh, no, when we are taking mu, mu is nothing but the mean of the cluster, right? yeah mean of the cluster so now my point xi wants to move to you know uh, other cluster in mm -hmm. t plus one iteration right mm -hmm. t plus one -th iteration it wants to move to other cluster mm -hmm. so so the distance of xi from the previous cluster is greater than uh, you know the cluster where it wants to move that point is clear so why yeah. we are not writing mu to the power t plus one on the right hand side? It should be ideally mu to the power t plus one, no? because in t plus one is iteration, my point will move, move to you know uh, other uh, cluster. That's the doubt. That's the only no, doubt. Why we not, it yeah. is before the move. Okay, so tell me. after the assessment, before the move. Uh, that, that no, that that's word why it's clear, but technically I'm just trying to understand because my point, if, if if it is before the move, mm -hmm. okay, that's fine. No, before the move, your mu is still there only. Ah, but the then why, why we are mentioning z to the power t plus 1? Then it will be z t only, no? Because uh, okay, no, no, it, is, fine, fine, is, fine. it, is, it no, is deciding that, to go to the bucket. It is I deciding to go to the bucket. Z i t is only k. Right, right. Okay. Okay, yeah, yes, I got it. z i to the power t is denoting my cluster. So now my point x i wants to move to second cluster. Say, for example, from cluster 2 to cluster 3, right? Mm. Because the ter this uh, ter terminologies are making more confused, concept is bit you know simpler. My point is planning to move from cluster two to cluster three, right? Mm. So the, it's it's quite obvious that the distance of that point from the current mean mm. will be you know uh, greater than the distance of uh, the ith point from the future mean. I will okay. use the word future mean. So yeah. oh, conceptually that's... it is clear. Conceptually it is clear. And the only point why we are not putting mu to the power t plus one. So only yes, confusion no. lies between the notations, right? Notice, that's why yes, I, that's I want clear, to make, That's why I want to make sure that these notations are clear or not. Because if these notations are not clear, <laughs> then everything will go up. Right? It is clear. Yes, yes, sir. Please proceed. Uh, maybe that maybe if I can I ask a question here. Here, here. The, assess, the right side is still comparison with the uh, existing new on the, uh, uh, the destination cluster, right? It is not the revised uh, mean. The revised mean can be can be more closer or more far because we never know yeah. who. No, no. Um, all my other question is, it is, it is the existing mean of the destination cluster. It is not the revised mean. Yeah, Correct. it's the existing mean. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. Sir, I have a more very basic question, sir. Hmm? Uh, sir, why are we squaring uh, 
if the norm is being taken then uh, why do we need to square it right now no no it's not uh, here too i am denoting as a l2 norm okay okay so this my bad i should have taken as a subscript here this two is denoting as the l2 norm Sorry for the confusion, but it's not scale to L two norm. No, no, sir, it's not a confusion. Vivek, Vivek has asked a very valid question, sir. Professor has used the word so many times that it is square of the you know norm, square of the distance, square of the distance. He has used he has used the word L two norm also. At the yes. same time, he has used the phrase you know square of the uh, distance. So distance how how we define L two norm? L two norm defined as x one square plus x two square plus x n square root over this, right? Yeah, so right. the term will also be there. Yeah, you are right. The term yes. will also be there. Yes, every time he has used that phrase. Yeah, but but it won't affect your final answer because uh, these are the square of terms. Some of the squares of. Uh, ah, but but his point is right, sir. Even even if we are not using the square word, we are going to the, get the same answer that the left hand side will be less than the right hand side. Then why are we using square? Yes. But I was about to ask. That that question. won't affect your answer at all. Okay. The only point is that we are using Euclidean distance here. The same thing will go for any kind, any p norm or any uh, any norm, right? Or or say many term distance. So this this inequality is clear. And this is strict inequality, right? Because there is some data points which are actually moving. If they are not moving, there is nothing to prove. We we have proved that convergence. But uh, we are assuming that there is con the in CS iteration my Uh, algorithm isn't uh, convert so there is some points which are moving and uh, that's why this strict inequality comes into the picture right so if you have any doubts in this inequalities please ask we will move to the next part of that sir i have a doubt uh, mm -hmm. in the t uh, plus 1th iteration yeah. uh, like uh, mu t z i t plus 1 uh, this thing is is still bothering me like uh, Okay, let uh, me let me explain this uh, again. Okay, so uh, what I'm saying that in the I have some k values, k clusters, okay, and n data points. Now in tth iterations, uh, my uh, algorithm isn't uh, is not converged. Okay, so what I uh, what I will uh, there is some points which are actually uh, moving in the t plus one iterations, right? They are reassigned some clusters. I'm saying that there is one point x i. Which is not happy with its own clusters now in tth iteration. Okay, so in tth iteration, it belongs to the cluster cluster uh, k. Okay, so what notations I use here? Uh, let's say k. Okay, so here I'm saying that it belongs to mu k in tth iterations, right? So what is the value of z uh, z i t here? K k right. So uh, I can replace this k with z i t. Okay, so I'm denoting it with mu z i t t, right? So at yeah. the iteration, my x i data point belongs to this cluster. But he finds that he is not happy with this cluster. He actually nearer to the l s cluster, and the mean of that l s cluster is mu l, right? In the iterations, so he is not happy means that he is more close to this point rather than this point, right? Okay, and uh, like mu t l is also uh, found in the tth iteration, right? Yes, uh, so it's a tth iteration. So, what what is value of z i t plus one? What it means that l l cluster, the cluster in which i i data point wants to move, right? Yeah, so l that is l. So it is l. So I am denoting it as mu z i t plus one, right? Now, once this iteration happened in the t plus one iteration, this data point has moved to this point, this cluster, right? Lf cluster, and there may be some other points which have come to this cluster, and some points which has which have moved from this cluster, right? So the mean of this point will shift, right? In t plus one iteration, does that point make sense? In t plus one iteration, this this mean will shift to some other point. Okay, yeah, sir. Like uh, mu t z i t plus mu t plus like... one has been shifted now. This yeah, l mu t plus one has been shifted now at some other point. I'm saying that to this point. It may be closer to this. It may be far away from this. It depends upon how many points have been added and how many points have moved from this. So it, it we cannot say anything about at this point of time about how it moved. It moved to uh, near to x i or not. 
we we never know this thing right yes sir, actually i was confused about uh, mu t z i t plus one how this thing is uh, like come to existence like uh, but uh, now it's clear like it's been existed and in the next iteration we are founding that x i is closer to that yeah and uh, yes. that's why so, we assigned so, to that. so this this i can write as z i t plus one yes. right now my uh, is those notations yes. clear now crystal clear okay. okay so uh, since uh, the algorithm says that this point has moved to move to lth cluster from uh, Kth cluster. It means that this distance is lesser than this distance, right? And what is this distance? This is nothing but norm of x i minus mu z i t plus one and t. This distance is lesser than norm of x i. This distance. So this is mu z i t t, right? And this is true for all data points. I can sum over all n point. So this must be clear, right? And uh, I can just square those terms. Won't affect my uh, inequalities, right? Uh, so just last time trying this, sir. Last time asking this question mm -hmm. on the right hand side where you have written with green color, right? Just on top of that you have written mu t plus one jedi t plus one, right? Mm -hmm. And just now we agreed that in the in the next iteration, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the point will move to next cluster. So the mean of that cluster is nothing but mu t plus one, right? Yes. So again, I am stuck at that point. Ideally speaking, here on the right hand side, on the below part, mm -hmm. where you are writing that less than equal to, so it should be x i minus mu z i t plus one and mu to the power t plus one. Why we are not writing t plus one? No. I so mu t plus one is this point. What 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 I know is that this distance is lesser than this distance. Do I do I know about any comparison between this distance and this distance? But anyway, when my when my point will move to next cluster, right? So the distance will be calculated with mm -hmm. respect to the mean of the new cluster, sir. New cluster, but when when the reassignment happens? After iteration, after next iteration, the next iteration, my point will reassign and itself to next when, cluster. What is the conditions when x y x i will move to the next cluster? When this distance is lesser than this distance, right? I haven't computed this distance yet. It can be lesser. It can be larger. I don't know because I have I haven't recomputed my the next mean. What I know, I'm at create iteration and I see that the x distance of x i point from the lth cluster is lesser than the cluster kth cluster. So I x i point wants to move to the lth cluster. That's all I know. So, so are we saying that the point has physically not moved to next cluster, right? But, but, but sorry, physically means point has not moved right now. Point, point, is point not, are fixed. Data set is given to you. Point are saying, uh, the clusters no, are changing. And so, just I'm saying that point is the point has not reassigned itself mm -hmm. to the next cluster. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am comparing it with the mean of the because when we are writing mu t, right? Mm. So mu t is not the mean of the next cluster. Mu t is the mean of the present cluster itself. Yes, right? yes, sir. Yeah, pre previous cluster, tier cluster, pre tier huh, pre cluster. Present cluster itself. That's what Ravi was using the word present and future. So present cluster itself, right? Mm. So the point has moved to the next cluster. It may be, sir. I don't want to spoil time of everyone. Maybe that I'm missing some important. Look at it yeah. this way. Yeah. I have decided I am closer to that cluster's mean than the current right. cluster. Correct. Okay. Yes. I decide yes. that I should go there. Right. Okay. But if I go there, what will the objective function be? That is the evaluation that is happening. If I go there, what will the objective function change to? That is assessed first before the move is decided. The first indication mm -hmm. green light is it is closer to the other mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, will the objective function also change or not with the current means of this cluster and that cluster? Mm. That also is a tick. Then you go to that place. Okay, sir. We proceed. I maybe that you know I am missing some important uh, things. So I'll add this line here, uh, Ganga Prasad. Uh, so when you decide to move to the new cluster, right? By by the fact that you move to the new cluster, uh, the mean will also change, no? Correct. Because now my point will go to next cluster. So now I will but be I will be compared with the mean of the new cluster. Not not really. That we will do in the next round. Mm. Okay. That we will do do on T plus two. That that yes. time we will do the yes. T plus second iteration. Yes, yes. Okay. 
imagine like this a very bad example assume the state of the current relations is between india and pakistan is bad the only way that happens is change of government in pakistan then you want to assess which government no whether the government change actually helps india or not and then go about changing the decision of the government over there just take it as that yeah, very, very bad okay. example but yeah. a very no, good no. one not related to data yeah. first first okay. you see whether it is functioning or not it is not functioning <laughs> then you decide yes. what what should be there uh, if it goes there what does the objective actually improve if it is not improving why bother why go and change the government there correct correct yeah. yes yes sir you proceed sir sorry to you not taking so much time yes, so thank you everyone for explaining but okay let me proceed then see if if you are not comfortable uh, please go to the lectures again and yeah i'll do that sir it seems yeah, like, try to explain it seems it. quite obvious yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so this inequality is clear. This one, this inequality is clear or not? This should be clear. Uh, uh, now we we are moving to next inequalities. For so proving this next inequalities, uh, uh, we are going to use one simple fact. Okay, so do that first. Okay, so. So one in inequality is done. Now we will use in the uh, next part. Uh, then uh, first we will see one uh, uh, one fact is that let's assume you have some points uh, x one some points here, right? Some let's say n points are given to you. Now I want to find one point or say vector v uh, from any from this space input space such that whenever I calculate the distance of every point from this v, this distance. Should be minimum. Some of these distance should be minimum. What is such v? Can you think of such v? When I calculate the distance of every point from that v and sum over that, that summation should be minimum. What can be that v? The mean itself. Correct. Mean. The mean itself, right? So all the data, mean of all data points. So x one to x n divided by n. So this is that point uh, which when I calculate the distance from each and every point and sum over that. Then it will be the minimum that point, the minimum distance, right? Or in other bit, I can write is that the x i minus b norm over that i over one to n. And if I found such b, if I look up for such b, it should be the mean of that, right? This should be intuitive as well. Or if you want to prove, you can prove using uh using the first derivative test right you here this is your objective function you have to find b and you have to minimize this function right and uh, you will see that this is nothing but the mean of this b is nothing but the mean of uh, all those data points okay okay so we are going to use this fact for the proving our next uh, next in inequality okay okay now now you have uh, in the t plus one iterations, now come to the t plus one iteration where we have moved i, I data point to ls cluster from kf cluster right now we are in the t plus one iteration in t plus one iteration uh, now we are in t plus one iteration if i calculate this distance xi minus mu t plus one so i'm calculating distance of every data point from its own cluster so i will denote it by zi t plus one so it's the distance of i data point from its own cluster now, right? Because we are in the t plus one iteration, right? So this is the distance of i data point from its own cluster, right? Does this making sense now? This is the distance of i data point from its own cluster mean, right? And I'm summing over all such data points. Now I just proved the fact that since uh, I have key cluster. Let's say these these are my three clusters, and uh, I'm summing the distance. I'm taking the uh, distance from every data point from its mean, uh, and that is sum over the distance of every data points in this cluster from its own mean, and uh, the distance of every data point from in uh, in this cluster from its own mean, right? So this sum will be minimum only for this b. If I substitute any other points at this place, that gonna be greater than. Uh, that value should be greater, right? Because that's the fact I used here. 
because these are the mean of these data points, right? And so it means that this should be always less than, if I put any other vector other than this vector, then this should be greater or I don't know, it can be equal as well. But uh, what I can be sure that this should be minimum for th these means, right? Is it clear? Can you repeat I... this once again, please, a little slowly? Yeah. So I'm saying that since uh, these are the means of its own point, its points, right? Because uh, let's assume you have three clusters and I'm, I'm taking the distance of these data points from its own mean, right? Correct. So this should be minimum only for this point. If I if I substitute any other point rather than mean, then that value should be Correct. higher. So, uh, and it, it is true for all three three clusters. Clusters, right? yes. So yes. this value should be minimum uh, for this vector only. If I substitute any other vector other than mean, then that function value, this objective function value, must be greater or can be equal, right? But cannot yeah. be lesser than that value. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and I just said that I I can substitute any vector other than that mean. Can uh, okay, so that b can be any any vector. It is this inequality is true for any such v. Okay, can can you put the circles back, please? I have my question is actually following that. Can you put the circles back? Yeah. So these are your clusters. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now in the clusters. What yes. you said, the right, left side portion is related to the means of the individual clusters. Individual The clusters. right side V, yeah, individual clusters. Right side V is a representation of all the data points mean, right? No, it V can be anything. For for it any data point, any it, can, it can be any change. It can be different for any X, Y. Uh, I mean, to ask V, as you uh, put the notation earlier, Mm -hmm. is the mean of all the points correct so i wanted to understand if it is a global thing that we are talking about or each cluster that we are talking about the value of v is no so that fact is true for this uh, this cluster as well this cluster as well and this cluster as well correct right? but what is v is what my question is v if we had to talk about is is it a global centroid or no this is v it... is nothing to do this this can be any v or you just denote it by u some other vector u it's anything is it okay it okay. can be anything but okay. it, uh, this is this thing is minimum only when this u is your mean right when u is mean but uh, uh, individual cluster means or the global mean individual is what cluster mean individual cluster mean so this fact i can can prove for this uh, individually for cluster, this yes. individually for this and individually for this and i can sum over the cluster that's correct. what i'm doing here correct okay okay Okay. So we're still talking about only clusters, like regardless of what the value of V is, it will be minimum only when the mean is used. That is what we are saying. Mean is right? used, yes. Okay. 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 So, okay. and uh, as I said, it can be true for any U. So I can substitute it with mu uh, ZIT, T, uh, um, ZIT, T plus one, right? Yeah. It can be true. So I just substitute one to just to make uh, my whatever I want. Okay, so this inequality is true. And what is this value? This is nothing but the objective the function value of yeah. the t plus one iteration, a, right? A t plus one iteration, but with uh, z t. Z t. Uh, you just wrote it as z t. Uh... This is the objective function. This this uh, look at this function. This is the objective function value at t plus one iteration. Correct. Right. And uh, what is this, this? What is this thing? And this we have already seen that this is lesser than the very first family that we approved. This is this thing, right? This is less than this thing. And what is this thing? This is the objective function value at the tier iteration. Correct. Correct. Uh, in the earlier slide, it is. Uh, can you go back to the earlier slide, please? Mu power uh, mu t plus one is what you had written there. No, no, the previous slide, the one where you are writing currently. There, the bottom one, uh, it is xi minus mu zit t, t plus, plus one is. Yeah. So it is related to the t plus one th iteration, but there is a revised mu, correct? Revised mean. Oh, sorry, sorry. So this would be zt, zt plus. Yeah. yeah, yeah that right, is what right. was, that was my question. Yeah. Right, right. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, this we have already seen that this is le strictly so, less than. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Sir, I have a doubt. Can I ask? Yeah, yeah, sure. 
so uh, in case of uh, supposedly we are taking k min, uh, k means plus plus algorithm and they are in the first very first iteration mm -hmm. uh, when we are uh, calculating uh, distance of all all the points from a from a random mean and mm -hmm. uh, supposedly i find a distance uh, which is like 9 and mm -hmm. another distance is um, supposedly 7 Mm -hmm. So, sir, there uh, K means plus plus algorithm says that there is a high chance that will go the uh, main will go uh, to that point where the distance is nine. Is it right, sir? You are out of this sir, context. Then, no, 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 sir, sir, I'm just asking this. Uh, like, does uh, does that second inequality holds there? Yeah, the, the same proof go, uh, also holds true for k means plus plus as well. Okay. The k means plus plus only changes there. We have some diff, uh, better way to initialize your clusters. And that's it. Other algorithm goes in the same manner. See, k means k means plus plus, sir. If correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry, sir. Firstly, I joined a little late. I couldn't get out of work. Uh, k means plus plus is only for initializing of the centroid, right? After yeah. that, the algorithm is the same. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's the better way to initialize your k-means. OK, so so here I proved this. Uh, this is the objective function in the t plus 1 iteration. So I'm denoting it as z1 t plus 1, uh, z2 t plus 1, and z and t plus 1, right? And then this, this inequality we have shown that it is less than summation over xi mu z i t t and sum over all those points and what is this this is the objective function at tth iteration right okay so yeah. i have seen that i have found that the objective function value from z i z1 t plus 1 uh, i mean the objective function at tth t plus 1 iteration is strictly less than the objective function value at tth iteration what does it mean that uh, every time when uh, reassignment happens, my objective function value decreases, right? Yeah. Uh, is uh, that line clear? That statement is clear or not? That uh, every time when reassignment happens, the objective function values strictly decreases. Sir, why strictly? Uh, it is less than or equal to, right? Here it is less than equal to, but here is strictly less than because the assignment happens only when he, he the data point finds it nearer to some other point. Right? That's why this is strictly less than equality comes to the very first proof that we have done. Very first in inequality. Distance is less, right? Yeah, distance is less. Sir, but uh, th this is an assumption that T, uh, uh, but I have not gone through x number of iterations or n number of iterations already uh, but, but I, I have chosen arbitrary iteration tth iteration t plus 1 iteration so it holds proof holds true for any iteration right so i'm saying that whenever reassignment happens the objective function value will decrease and that makes sense as well because that was our motive we only uh, uh, reassign our clusters when uh, we found that it is getting nearer to some other point it means that my objective function is get, uh, getting uh, taking lesser value or say my clusters are getting compact to each other uh, my argument uh, is that uh, suppose it is not uh, uh, compacting further in t plus 1 th, uh, iteration so mm -hmm. it won't be strictly less than uh, th yeah but but that uh, algorithm doesn't uh, do that assignment if 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 it finds that if the assignment yeah. Making your uh, objective function higher, then that reassignment doesn't consider for that uh, Lloyd algorithm. It it only reassigns when he finds that uh, he's closer to some other cluster. And okay. this, this ensures that your objective function will always decrease in every iteration. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. So uh, now, can you can you can you tell me why t should be finite in this case? Why number of iteration should be finite? Because partitions are finite eventually. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because partitions are finite, and every iteration leads to uh, every uh, every iteration leads to different objective function value. It means that partition are not repeating itself, right? 
because if the partition repeat it means the objective function will repeat and that is not the case objective function will be strictly decreasing so partition yes. partitions are not repeating itself it means that there and since there are only finite points for finite partitions are possible k raised to power n partitions are possible remember so number of iteration has to be finite is it clear yes sir yep okay, i'm not sure whether you got one, one more time one more time a little slow please okay the objectives are uh, uh, the objective function is so always that is statement is clear yeah, uh, objective whenever, function is reduced. Whenever, okay. whenever i do a reassignment whenever the cluster points are moving from one cluster to another another cluster the objective function will strictly decrease that Correct. statement is clear clear right clear. Okay. it yeah. means that uh, whenever uh, reassignment happens the partitions are not repeating in any iteration partitions uh, are not repeating if, if the partition repeat it means that that objective function will also same partition uh, when you say you mean uh, putting it in a different bucket or uh, partitions what? are that putting in different buckets right different right, right, right. So they don't repeat itself that configuration yeah, once it is already figured out that that is the closest it will stay there correct yeah right so any partition will not repeat itself and there are only finite number of partitions yeah right? yeah. yeah so yeah. so that number of partition has to be finite yeah 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 so it converges it converges right okay but when it is converging uh, maybe you will cover this in the initialization this was a question i was having after the lecture that i watched will it always with with any kind of initialization will it always go to the minimal global minima or is there a possibility no, no, that, that is I start... uh, that is not true but for that particular initialization that final cluster should should be the optimal one but for for Sorry. your for your objective your objective is to find the better clusters right that Correct. that depends upon in initialization yes the reason why i say is when i say initializing uh, i have already decided the number of k that i want let's say i have decided on k as 5 okay. five clusters mm -hmm. and i have given initializations of the five mu's as different things like in case 1 i have given one set case 2 i have given another yeah, set case 3 i have given another set will yeah. all the three uh, searches lead to the same outcome no no never no never no, okay not okay. Not okay okay in fact uh, in fact so, if uh, i am looking if i am right mm -hmm. uh, ravi uh, mm -hmm. sir you can correct me if i am wrong Uh, see in commercial softwares like mm -hmm. SAS or SPSS, whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about Python and all because I have not used it so much. I've used these a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you let's say you run a segmentation today or clustering today, mm -hmm. right? It will do this initialization multiple times. Okay. okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. And, 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 that, and do even hundreds under... of times bootstrapping, and mm -hmm. it will give you the best among all of them, right? Uh, and it will give you some clusters which are best among whatever. it's done tomorrow you re repeat it you will get a slightly different cluster out uh, configuration slightly different right okay uh, okay whether it will be a half a percent difference here and there and i mean in terms of overall all okay. the but there will uh, be a difference how how are bigger large sm smaller large it is there will be a difference okay My, yeah 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 there will all okay. okay. it is never going to the so, global optimum i have okay I, I have a related question. Uh, will my uh, value of k be determined by actually running uh, these things multiple times, like you said? No, no. K, you have to always determine upfront. So uh, uh, then, my question is, how do I determine the k? See, that that is based on the domain expertise. I'll tell you how it happens. Like you first run, let's say, with five five clusters, right? You get five clusters. You look at the these clusters. Let's say you look at you know, let's say you're doing it on. Uh, your bank customers let's say you look at these five clusters and see achar these clusters making sense to me right in whichever way you look at it right uh, if they are not then you will try again let's do six let's do seven let's do four you will try various things and it has to make business sense once it makes business sense you will say okay this looks like the right one i'll go with six or seven whatever that decision is right so that hyper parameter is because it has to be given by a human so uh, then uh, what does initialization initialization mean if uh, not uh, the number of k's i assumed when you said no 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 okay. no 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 initialization is i have let's say 10000 data points right mm -hmm. and i am let's say i am running five clusters okay or six uh -huh. clusters right 
it will like what starting point should I take for these six clusters? It will randomly pick some six data points, right? That is initialization. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uniformly picking up uh, five. Uh, that yeah, uh, how in, 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 yeah. In the regular one, it's uniform. In K plus plus, it is not uniform. It is probabilistic. Okay, right. I have one more, one more question, Vasu. Uh, sorry, sorry, we don't we make anything else. Yeah, no, please, please go ahead. Please. Please go ahead. So uh, the uh, outcomes are different, but are these three outcomes anywhere close, or is there a possibility they can vary? They'll very be, widely? they'll be very, they'll be very close. In reality, they'll be very, they'll close. Be very close. So Ravi, did you attend the yesterday session? Yes, I did. Yes, I did, but I did not watch the videos for yesterday's session. So sorry. Okay, so uh, where, I, where, where I actually I saw uh, taking two different initializations and we are getting two different clusters. Right? Oh, well, you, okay. 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 So, so these initializations may lead to completely different different clusters. It's not. Uh, it may be the case that those are no nowhere closer to each other. So we can okay. get. Uh, I mean, like a. Well, we cannot really take a decision, or if you take a decision, it is also going to be bad. That can also happen. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's that's uh, it, the the practice that SQLN follows is that if you, can you see my screen? Yes. Where I, uh, the SQLN libraries I open. So this yeah. is the module where we we can uh, we can implement k-means algorithm using SQLN libraries. So if you if you see here, uh, you can see that uh, that uh, here is one parameter which is uh, random state. Uh, not random state. Random state is one for defining. I mean, not changing the value. Not changing the initial. In yeah, initial. So where is that? Okay. Yeah. So and in it is a in, in a variable which actually you have to set. So it it means that this particular algorithm will run ten times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By default ten, and you can set this value as to some value. If you set it to one, it means that. You, that particular al algorithm will uh, run for one time and will give you the clusters. And if it is ten, set to ten, it means your particular algorithm will run ten times and will check for for which particular uh, time, which particular uh, partitions it gives you the least objective function value, and it will return those clusters to you out of those ten clusters. Oh, okay, so I do the entire thing ten times with ten initial initialization values. Yeah, so that is the best practice we follow for k-means because we never know which initializations will lead to the best clusters. So okay. in uh, so this SQLN follows it follows on by default ten clusters. And if you see if okay. you set k-means plus plus here k-means plus plus, make sure that you have some how uh, make your initializations better, right? So in the case mm -hmm. of k-means plus plus, it's using it uses only one. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Because I'm already into a different uh, hyper. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. I already transformed, and I should be, get a better uh, fix there. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. that is the best okay. practice for k-means algorithm. Whenever you apply k-means algorithm for any data set, uh, re-apply re those algorithm for different initializations and see which okay. initialization will give you will uh, is giving you the best objective function value, uh, okay. and take those as your final cluster. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. So it took more than three hours, two hours yesterday, one hour today to complete. Uh, firstly, I was stuck at work. Finally, I joined uh, from yeah, that, that uh, mobile also. So I was not able to see everything clearly. Mobile was too small. So I mean, <laughs> localized so, problems. I'd, 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 Sorry. I'd, I'd, uh, <laughs> sir, I think this is one of the easier weeks. SVM and all will be a lot more difficult. Yeah, SVM will be tougher, week, but but it's not like it's the easiest week. You will find regression, uh, the decision tree KNN will be more easy than this. It means again is an easy algorithm. If you are getting confused, with, uh, so only confusion I can see here is with the notations. Algorithm is clear in your head, right? What's actually going on? Yeah. yeah. Right. Sir, where we find the practice questions, sir, for exam? The assignment, right? Activity. Only activity. assignment questions will not come exam, sir. Okay, but uh, this time look we'll at the, look at the past papers. Past papers. Paper is different. Uh, portions are different, right? So Only one will be available. But this time, of uh, I, make, uh, I make sure that uh, this time uh, we will providing more mock tests as well before the exam. Last time it won't happen for. 
every quizzes but this time we will make sure that we will provide you the mock test as well and the assignments also there if you uh, if you uh, there is no solve with instructor sessions also sir sorry solve with instructor sessions look about uh, was uh, in this mlt course we don't have much numerical questions much theoretical questions like concept based questions if you if you follow some uh, standard ml book you never will find such questions so coming up with the questions is very hard for us so that is why we are not having solve with instructor kind of sessions and this this questions again don't make much sense because this ml is more on like a practical course where you have been given data set and then apply the algorithm and see how the different parameters are affecting your model and uh, you will see how uh, this goes in future weeks right there may there may come different parameters here we only talk about the algorithm we never talk, talk about how the parameters will affect we never talk about the how to choose k value we only just know the different ways of k values but when you will start working with real data set you will see that those values actually setting those values is very very crucial part of your modeling it's not it's straightforward what k value should i put what initialization i put how many iterations should i go with how many told this uh, so these kind of parameters are very crucial for any kind of uh, model in your machine learning so that's only comes when you will uh, start working on real data set only reading those questions those algorithm won't give any idea about how to set those values how to how to apply algorithm on that okay so going forward you will all obviously learn all those things But for now, yes. Yes. sorry, sorry. Go on, please. Go on. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'm done. Okay. Uh, between k means and k plus plus, that we were just discussing a little earlier, and Vasu also mentioned that it is only the initialization part which is crucial uh, between k and uh, k means plus plus, which is the kernel. Oh, we'll get better initialization. This yeah. is regardless of uh, everything else, including the size of data, because. when we actually go for kernel what was shared in pc also is that when you say kernel no, the dimension can increase k means plus plus not kernel not kernel okay sorry no no, no. the kernel it yeah, just yeah, in place uh, there was some bit of uh, they they could use kernel uh, 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 for k means plus plus as well it was there in the lecture yeah, yeah that's reason was asking yeah see k yeah. means or k means plus plus the only difference is initialization now you could apply it on your regular data or your kernel transform data depending on whether the original data has non linear relationships or not right so the data whether it's kernel transformed or not and k and k mean plus plus are independent of each other okay was so, uh, on the same thing so the data size can potentially increase uh, in uh, when we go for uh, uh, not data size business. data size uh, features will increase Yeah, so yeah, data, features, yeah, correct. Correct, correct, correct. Total total volume of yeah, 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 uh, yeah. data will increase, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, regardless of that uh, size difference, will the uh, uh, I mean, like, will the uh, algorithms work efficiently, or uh, it doesn't matter? That what, regardless that of data, uh, data has uh, data size has no bearing on this. That I don't know, yeah, honestly. But okay. uh, see, it's only the features which are increasing, right? So correct, correct. when you compute the the L two norm instead of Mm. let's say you're doing it on four features basically four computations right per mm. per data point right if you have let's say now it's transformed to 10 features then you're doing 10 computations per data point right so correct it's a proportional increase but if it uh, is it... going to give you better results because it's transformed because the problem with uh, k means from whatever i understand again sir can correct it it, it doesn't uh, it just can't it just can't pick up non linear structures right not only yes. can't it not pick up non linear structures it doesn't differentiate between non linear structure and no structure right yeah. so uh, so you have no option but to either use kernel transformation or you have other things like you know if it is contiguous uh, if you are doing some kind of contiguous segmentation then you use db scan there are various other things which you use right where k means doesn't work Uh, my my uh, question is coming from the scenario sometimes uh, the data size can be in terabytes also in engineering so instead of 1 terabyte i end up with 2 and 1/2 terabytes of uh, information that i process through because it is transformed to from one to another 
then uh, yeah, does it I, does it actually become effective or i don't know yeah see i've always worked with uh, honestly i don't have an answer i worked with uh, much smaller data sizes okay, okay because these data these data points are representative of the larger population okay okay so instead of like taking let's say uh, you know 10 million uh, car buyers i take a sample which is representative of that which could be only okay, 10000 okay. okay. right Okay. so then it doesn't matter for me so i honestly don't know the answer okay uh, anything from you sir okay on so, the size so of data to that point when you were discussing about the k means uh, i mean the kernel means and k means plus plus so actually if you see k means uh, uh, the the partitions that the boundary region that we talk about right mm-hmm. uh, the partition if you see there they are the linear linear in features right linear uh, linear function of features Correct. So those partitions are the hyperplane. It means that if if your clusters, natural cluster in the data set, uh, are not being are cannot partition using the linear surface or linear hyperplanes, then uh, k-means plus plus can never uh, give you those clusters. Right? Uh, one case, one per example we have seen like concentric circles, where the those two are different clusters. So as those clusters cannot be partitioned using linear surface, right? Linear line. Yeah. The line or plane or some hyperplane cannot be partitioned. Yeah. So yeah. K means yeah. plus plus will never give those two as your clusters. Okay. So uh, that's that's where we go for the kernel K means. Kernel, kernel K means actually partitions your uh, I project your data set into higher dimensions. There those clusters can be partitioned using linear functions. I mean the linear surface. There okay. we like partitions are data set. Okay, maybe uh, I am getting confused between k-means and k-means plus plus and kernel k-means. Yeah. Would you be able to clarify that one, please? So, yeah. See, there could be. Can I uh, can I try, sir? And yes, sir. Yes, yes. Correct if I'm wrong. See, uh, think of it like a two by two box. Mm-hmm. One is one side is k-means, the other side is k-means plus plus. Mm-hmm. uh the other side is normal data kernel transform data okay four boxes 2 by 2 grid clear four boxes 2 by 2 grid one axis is k means other axis is no one one side is type of initialization k means and k means plus plus okay the other side is normal data transform data kernel transform data mm-hmm. right you can do all four options uh uh-huh. okay right so k means and k means plus plus has nothing to do with kernel transformation they are just initializations okay right yeah kernel okay. transformation is i can like i can i take the normal data and transform it don't call it kernel pca uh, uh, k means yeah call it transform k means okay it's easier right so i can do normal data i can do k means or i can do k means plus plus the only difference is how i am doing the initialization right no okay okay just processing also yeah see okay. f- forget that there is any kernel transformation okay right. forget about kernel transform let's take some data you've been given right mm-hmm. now you know k your k means is clear yes k means is clear right? yeah yeah right now let's say you want better initialization right mm-hmm. instead of just randomly picking up some data points and making them the centroid Mm-hmm. right you want some better initialization okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then what do you do you do k means plus plus okay it same k means only it's not kernel k means it's not okay. kk means it's k okay. means only okay it's initial also is k means the next one is also k means plus plus it is not okay. kk means okay okay right so you can either do normal initialization or k means plus plus initialization right now okay. now this is this is complete in itself mm-hmm. now let's say the data is not they it doesn't have linear structures it has non linear then we go for kernel then you go for kernel now when okay. you do kernel kernel has nothing to again do with the initializations it's basically you transform the transform data transform the data okay right after that you can up and this transform data now think of it like a new data set Mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. original data you've thrown away you have a new data set right mm-hmm. now on the new data set you can again apply k means or you can apply k means plus 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 okay that's it uh, okay. just just one second there's somebody in the door one second yeah yeah so um uh, sir you explained about uh, the 
k-means and k-means plus plus if it is only initialization that is the difference is there a way yeah, this is the only difference. Or plus, i mean like what would be the initialization difference in mathematically is it something which you already covered yesterday sir i'll just go through the video again yes or... it is covered completely yeah. okay. okay sorry then we'll i'll go over the video okay i will try to upload the video sir so link is not there in the calendar today's system yeah I, I will upload the videos on the youtube and then we'll update the thing please please okay. refer to the live session uh that uh, excel sheet excel sheet huh? yeah, i'll upload that link there Okay. okay, sir. Okay. So, I'm not sure whether I utilize this or just based in my one for that particular uh, proof of convergence. But it's okay. I actually planned for the programming part for week three, but actually it banned. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please uh, take the programming part, uh, especially the last two questions. Okay, but but I don't see I can finish it in half an hour. It's okay. Oh. Stretch. Let us see, sir. sir, what portion we can finish and then if required, we can have additional sessions. Sir. sir, I think there are only two main questions. Uh, uh, rest are just, you okay. know, you so have to is, just is it see fine the shape of have, the... Is it fine if we just go through the solution rather than writing and explaining the code? Okay, yes, we can go through. Because actually I plan for writing the code because that makes me better to, to make you explain uh, rather than ex going through that. So, okay, so sir, as sir, we sir, don't have... Sir, the solution code is not released, right, sir, for week three? Yeah, week three is oh. not released. So week two is released, right? Yeah, week two is released. Okay, so week three I will release today or most probably by today. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay. So okay. So I was I mean, trying, but collab. the last one I'm not getting. Okay, and okay, in the okay. portal, I think they are asking the for two coordinates. Uh, uh, sir, might be asking for two myself, but uh, you can cover, you know, whatever you want to cover today, and then we can have one more session. I know, you know, you might be asking too much, but <laughs> sir, I think they are asking for two answers in one question, uh, separated by a comma, uh, the x component and the y component. So in the portal, it's not taking. I think. Yeah, if you just uh, enter each component and then check, then it'll show that it's your answer is right or wrong. Okay, okay. For example, if you get the mean and you enter the, uh, the first feature and then you press enter, you'll, it'll show it's in the right range. And then you try the question again and enter the second component and press enter, and then it, it'll show whether the second feature is in the right range. That's okay. how it worked for me. I think it was not matching. So please take okay. those questions. there is something wrong with the portal actually there are two programming assignments oh no nothing Go ahead. something to do with this portal i think sir has lost the connection that's why i was you know doubting because he was not responding to any of the statement Hello, am I audible? Yes. Sorry about that. I lost the connection in between. So now I connected using my mobile data. So let's see. Okay, so. Sir, I was asking about those programming questions. Last yeah, two questions. Yeah, we'll discuss that. All these questions we'll discuss. Can you see the Kula file? Yes, sir. Is the font visible to you? 
yes it is visible okay so here we have uh, implemented the k means algorithm for a toy data set okay so it's just uh, importing part here and we have created one toy data set and you can even see how we have created that Okay, so this is your data set. Random seed actually makes sure that every time this you run this code, the ran numbers randomly generated numbers they don't get changed, right? So if you can see here, we have tried we are trying to generate three clusters, and those numbers we are generating using the function random dot rand, and so it actually generates a number uh, that comes from the Gaussian distribution, uh, standard Gaussian distribution, not like a standard normal distribution. And how many numbers we are generating? We are generating uh, in a matrix. And the matrix shape is n by three and comma two. So n is two thousand. So n by three will give you an integer which is uh, when you divide it by three, right? N two. So here, uh, let's say uh, whatever six hundred or sixty seven, whatever that is. So that number uh, cross two matrix you will get for data one, and you are uh, shifting your data points to the points two comma two. So as uh, they are coming from the normal zero zero one. Now the mean has been shifted to two comma two. So all those points which are coming from here uh, are shifted to two comma two. Similarly, uh, the other clusters have been shifted to point minus three comma three, and another cluster has been shifted to point minus five comma three, right? And so this is and uh, then you have concatenating all these data points in in one array, right? So you can even verify how you have generated your entire data set. If you look at the x, what do you think will be the shape of x? Sir, can you please repeat that shifting part a little bit? Shifting it. So here, what what this is doing? So if I do uh, what what here is doing? Can you please mute yourself? So so yeah. if I write this code np dot random dot then what what it does? It actually generates a number from uh, from a Gaussian not standard normal distribution. So if if I run this. It's actually generating a number which is coming from the standard normal distribution. It means the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Okay, if I pass the shape here, let's say three comma two. So what it will do? It will generate numbers and store in the matrix of the shape three comma two. Right. So look, three comma two matrix has been generated, and all those numbers are coming from the standard normal distribution zero comma one. Right. And now what I'm doing? I'm just shifting those data points to some other points. Some other. Uh, uh, so you can think this as a one point. This has another point, and this has another point. Three points you have, right? And two features. This is one feature. This is the second feature, right? The columns are the features, and this rows are the data points. So this is your first data point. This is your second data point. This is your third data point. Now the as they are coming from the mean zero uh, normal distribution with mean zero, so these you can think the mean of these data points are zero comma zero. And now you are shifting to some other point. Now I'm adding two comma two. It makes sure that my mean has been my data points has been shifted by two. Every data points have been shifted by uh, one question, sir. Uh, like uh, all the data points were uh, standard Gaussian uh, thing, right? Yeah, it's all are coming from the standard normal distribution. Uh, okay, and I shifted some of, the, some of the points from the uh, around two comma two, some points around three comma three, and some point around minus three, minus five comma three. So it uh, it actually we are trying to create three clusters, three different clusters. Sir, uh, uh, the... hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, so the random is for random points, function generate random number. What is R A N D? This is a module in a uh, this this random is a module in NumPy which actually used for creating random numbers, right? And this 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 uh, this particular function is actually generating numbers from a standard normal distribution. Sir, what sir? R A N D? R A N D N is actually generates a number from the standard normal distribution. If I just write again n p dot random dot, so what it will do? It will just generate a sing uh, a number that is coming from the standard Gaussian distribution. I run it again. So this number is coming from the standard normal distribution. Clear? So if I if I just uh, run x here, so x here is your matrix where uh, here rows denotes data points and the column denotes your features value. Sir, yes. Sir, column. Sir, rows are the data points, right? Yeah, rows are the data points. 
so there are uh, two features per data point two features per data point i mean two dimensional yeah. data points we are taking yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So what 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 will be the shape of x? If, if if you try x dot, so there are two features and nine nineteen ninety eight uh, data points are there, right? Oh, uh, once again, uh, can you scroll up again, sir? Uh, the random dot seed. What is this function mean? Can you say it? Again? This uh, seed is actually make sure that when, because you are generating random numbers, right? So if you run it again and again, you will get different random numbers. So to make sure that whenever you re rerun this code, this particular cell. You get the numbers which have you already generated. So you you have to set some seed number here. Okay. okay so actually, we... these numbers are pseudo random number, not the random number, because there is some algorithm going on behind behind the in the back end to generate those numbers. That's why those are called pseudo number, not the random pseudo random number, right? So if we run the, that code again and again, then the value of x will not change, right? Will not change. Yeah. Because we have seed at zero. Okay. Or or you can just verify as as well, like right? so. For similar, it's like, lock, it's like locking the initialization. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Locking the initialization, of course. Locking your random uh, random numbers. So if if what I do, I if I just uh, run this particular cell again and again, I will get different numbers, right? It's a random number, but uh, again I'm uh, rerunning. It will give me some different numbers. But but when I set the random state here or say random seat here. Then what will happen? It 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 will generate the uh, random number first time, and uh, again we will run. Then it will give me it will lock that number that that random number. So let's do that. If random to some value, let's say one. So it has generated some random number coming from the standard normal. Uh, if I again run it, then it will not change. It is again coming one point six two. Okay, so it just lock those that number, right? Sir, here in this example, what is the range of that uh, random dot rand in? So, what what is the range of no standard normal? Uh, minus one to one. Range of normal is minus infinity to infinity, but minus most of infinity to infinity. But most of the data comes from minus around sixty eight percent data comes from minus one to one. Yes. Empirical yes. empirical rules of normal distribution, right? And yes, yes, around ninety nine point nine percent data comes from the range two sigma three minus sigma. three to minus three to plus three minus three to three, three sigma minus yes, three yes. to plus three. Yes, two sigma is ninety five percent was so. Yeah, correct, correct. Two sigma is ninety five percent. One sigma is sixty seven point five. I think. Yeah, and the three sigma is ninety nine point something. Yeah. Ninety nine point nine is very very close to one. So most of the data comes from the range minus three to three. It's very unlikely that you will get the data points uh, away from this. Somebody minus. was asking about random and random n. So random is the overall module. Random n is one function. There are other functions. Function. Random in yeah. Yeah. Random, yeah, random is a module. Yeah, yeah. Random is a module, and random n is a function that is present in yeah. that particular. Yeah, module. it's like a it's like a class and a method. Yeah. Okay. So this is how the data is being generated. Okay, let's move to the other part because this is not of most concerned. So here is we are asking number of features, number of uh, data points. So that is okay. Uh, so plotting the data set. Now the plotting data set is easy part. We have already have uh, imported the library matplotlib. So scatter plot on the x-axis. What we'll have uh, on the x-axis we have the first feature. On the y-axis we have the second feature. So first few features are coming from the columns, right? So this will give you the first column. This you will give. This will give you the second column. So this will be on the x-axis and this will be on the y-axis. So if you draw this, this is how your data set will look like. So remember, all those data points were coming from uh, standard normal, but we have shifted some data points at the point minus two comma two, and uh, I mean two comma two, some point at uh, near minus three comma three, some point near minus five comma some point, right? So that's why this uh, we have gotten some three clusters on, in our data set. Now we have to apply a clustering algorithm algorithm on this data set. So what is the <coughs> what is the procedure to procedure in K means? We just uh, we first set K equal to three. Here we can easily be very, uh, visualize K equal to three. But uh, there is different ways to set K's values, and we have already seen in the very first session, right? Okay. So here K we are taking as three. Now what is the first step? We have to randomly initialize your clusters. So here we have randomly chosen some indices. 
uh, you can even go for other indices but for this particular question we have set uh, that random indices as 2 comma uh, 200 800 and 1200 so we are taking 200 point 800 point and 1200 point as my first three clusters cluster centers okay then what is uh, what is our question here okay so here we have to take clusters okay so x so or you just just take let me write it so uh, cluster center will be what cluster center will be i will take x x and what point i will take the points which are at uh, 200 index uh, which are at 800 index and which are at 1200 index so it will give me the three data points from x and which are at these, these indexes right so i will pass the list here of the, uh, these indexes so if i run the cluster centers here it will give me those three points from x okay so this point is the 200 point this point is the 800 point and this is the 1200 point of my data set and this i'm taking as the first cluster First cluster send mean. This is I'm taking as the second cluster mean. This is I'm taking as the third cluster mean, right? Any doubt till this point? Or uh, rather than passing a list, you can just pass the array as well in this. Okay. It's the same like if I pass x x comma two. So what what it will return to return me? Second row, right? So what if I want to uh, I want to take the second column? What I what I comma. have to do? X comma one. Sorry, X comma. X, X of one. X of one. Then it will give me the first row. I want the yes. first column. I want I want the first column values. I mean the features. The first For feature all the values. What I, what I have to do? Uh, so colon all comma. Sir, sir, that colon, colon, one, one, zero, colon one. Yeah. So it will give me the first column values, right? Right. So similarly, I am to yes. take the uh, uh, two hundred row, eight hundred row, twelve hundred row. So then I have to pass a list or an array. So I am passing list here with this indexes, right? Okay. So any doubt till this point? Now we have three initializations for. Uh, I mean the initialization for three clusters mean. Okay. Now these are my clusters. So let me. Uh, rerun this so these are my three clusters means now and what is the next step so find the distance of every point from these uh, means from from these centers right so you have to de define a function which is uh, assigned cluster which takes parameter x k x is the data set k is the number of clusters and these are the initial clusters or in any iteration these are the clusters okay now what it should return it should return each data where each data point is going so this uh, i'm to return in a list okay so let me define this function define assign clusters and let's take parameter x number of clusters and the initial clusters okay. now uh, what what i have to do for finding where the data point is going for i have to do for every data points for x in x i have to put in every data point what i have to do the distance and check the minimum one and for, then for, map it to yeah. the so for that particular point i have to find the distance from all three clusters means right we have three clusters yes. means. so let's call them distances i'm calling them distances and uh, for finding the we have very uh, a module in l for finding the norm and we have already discussed in the previous session i mean previous b2 sessions and i'm to find the norm of what the cluster center right cluster so cluster center are three minus i have to do the centers okay, so i i have to do for all cluster center minus x and so this is for i in range and in range k yes sir this is issue with my k right and i just Take as in a list. So what it will do? It will create a list. So distance is a list where uh, it will find the distance of data points, data points from all three clusters points, cluster means, right? And I have to store 
the minimum one right so let me i will do this for every data point and i will store in the list and so i will just start a empty array and every time i just found the distance what i have to do now i have to check whether which one is the uh, uh, from which uh, centroid the x point is minimum right Yes. So I will do that append. I will just append the minimum index. So uh, np dot append. Now will append in there. Uh, what I have to append the minimum distance, right? Sir, uh, we are creating z. Just uh, the output is just zero, one, and two, na. Hmm? So the here this asks that uh, what is z. Hmm? I mean, what is the value of Z? So yeah. this will give me the distance, but they are asking for uh, the data belongs to which box? Yeah, yeah, which cluster, which okay. cluster. So that's why we are using argmin. If I use min, then okay. it will give me the distance. Argmin will give me the, the index of where the minimum is, minimum distance. Okay. okay, okay. Okay, and then I will just return that there. Right? So solution was already present there. So same kind of thing is happening here. Nothing different. I just brought it again. Okay. So here, if I run this, Z will be my. Okay. So what is what is wrong? K is not different. I didn't run. Here I defined K. K equal to T here. Okay, so I've run this particular uh, function for my data set X, where K have defined as three cluster, cluster sensor I've already defined for my data set, right? These are my initial clusters. Okay, so for this, I have de uh, de decided where my data point is going. So if I run this, it says that my the first point goes to zero cluster, the last point goes to the first cluster, right? And if I, uh, and it is, it is obvious as well, because that's how I, my data set is created. If you see uh, these, all are concatenate in, in in an order so all these data points are going to the one cluster all these data points are going to the next cluster and that all these are going to the last cluster so all data one here is going to cluster zero this data two going to cluster one and this data three is going to cluster uh two right so that's why we are getting that something that it is not sure because uh, uh it uh, it depends upon initialization as well Right, so it need not to be zero 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 one 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 two 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 something like that, yeah, because it depends upon your in initializations. Okay, so this is uh, about your fourth question. Should be clear now. Go to the next part. What is the next step in uh, K and K means algorithm? Okay, so here is the plotting part. Plotting part. I just go through it. I uh, now I uh, uh, color using. My cluster, uh, different clusters, where those clusters point. So there's a parameter in function plt dot scale plus c. So it makes sure those data points will be colored according to this array. So here uh, the same uh, array points where z is this point zero zero zero. It's array of zero one and two. So all those points which are mapped to zero will be clustered with one uh, one color, and all those points which are mapped to cluster two. It will be uh, colored with some other color, and all those points which are mapped to color uh, mapped to Z will equal to two will be colored with some other color. So it, uh, there is one parameter C, which makes sure that all those points will be colored with different colors depending upon what how they are mapping have how these mapping uh, mapping have uh, mapping is happening there. Okay, so you have to make sure that the shape of X, I mean the number of rows in X and Z should be same. Otherwise, those mapping won't won't happen. And that mapping, if there is not mapping, then uh, it cannot color your data points. Okay. Okay. So if I run this, and again I plot the cluster, uh, cl uh, my centered as uh, uh, centered as well. So cluster centers will give me my three clusters. I again plotting uh, on the x-axis the first feature, on the y-axis the second feature, and these are some different parameters: it's marker there, the size there, the color there, right? And so these plus points are actually my initial cluster. So if you can see these my initial clusters, th these are very random. So you can see the clusters are coming. Some the initial clusters are coming like that. So this is my first cluster. This is my second cluster. This is my third cluster. So initialization leads to this. But what is my next step? It will calculate the means. The uh, it will recalculate the means. So 
the mean of all those uh, yellow points will uh, will be somewhere here like right? so this mean now will shift somewhere here the mean of this point will some shift will somewhere here similarly for mean of these all uh, violet point will some will shift somewhere here so that is my next question you have to compute the cluster tensor again so it's taking z it means the any uh, the current cluster point cluster and the number of cluster and the data points now we have to compute the mean so how how to do that you just check which all point belongs to which cluster i just take the point which belongs to this cluster i and simply take the mean i will take out all those points which belong to this cluster and take out the mean and i, I will take all those points which belong to this cluster and will take out the mean that's it that's what we have to we have to do here so what I, i'm doing i'm finding the mean np dot mean and i'm taking only those points which belongs to cluster i and i is what i is ranging from 0 to k so 0 1 2 so when when it takes 0 so it will take only those points which belongs to cluster 0 and take the mean and when it takes value 1 it will take out all those points from x which which belongs to cluster 1 and will take the mean right similarly for i equal to 2 it will take all those points from x which belongs to cluster 2 and will take the mean and will uh, will arrange in the array so it will give me my again three clusters so this is the my uh, cluster mean for for the first cluster this is the cluster mean for the second cluster and this is the cluster mean for the third cluster right now here this is recomputing your mean so if you draw this again okay now we are repeating this is algorithm uh, this iterations 10 times and we'll see uh, okay so we'll see the how the clusters are changing so this is the very first initialization where the, these were my clusters now in the second iteration what will happen this mean will shift somewhere here right so this mean ha have been separated somewhere here this mean this uh, green mean has been separated somewhere here and this mean particular mean of this uh, violet color has been separated somewhere here now again it will recompute the mean so uh, it will take all those data points yellow data points will reconsider uh, and compute the mean similarly it will take all green points and recompute the mean all these violet point and will re reconsider the mean and now mean have been separated somewhere here again re reassignment of data points so in the third iteration my uh, uh, the cluster is looking something like that right and similarly in the four countries so in you can see in the third and fourth some only few data points are reassigned so here it was violet and in the fourth iteration this becomes green something like that right and then in the fifth iteration this somewhat got converged right so it got converged in the uh, five iterations and now it will give me the same result because it got converged Is all those codes clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, arg, arg men will give the index of the in, uh, index of the max, minimum. Minimum. Okay. So that saves a lot of calculation. And, uh, uh, sir, in in this uh, code, uh, what is uh, x is equal to zero is doing? Uh, can you say it again? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So x is equal to zero. Okay. So let me take one easy example to make. This axis, this is very important parameter in any any NumPy uh, functions. So let me take one uh, array. Let me define it as a np dot array and take some uh, a two dimensional array. So I'm taking two comma three, uh, four comma five. What is the shape of this array? What is the four. shape of this? Array? Uh, three cross two. Three cross two. Because to right two dimensional array where there are uh, uh, three rows and two columns. So let me do one function np dot sum, np dot sum of a. So what it will do? So it, it will, will add, add all add the all entries. The all the entries. Yeah. So it will add all the entries. Okay. Now if I set the parameter x is equal to x is equal to zero, what what it will do now? So uh, add along the first column. Add column wise. Column wise, right? So it will take two plus four plus five. So it will give me eleven. It will take the uh, second column three plus five plus six. Fourteen, right? If I set x is equal to one, then what? Add row wise. Row wise. So what will what what will be the output? 
Yeah, five three nine plus eleven. Four, uh, four, uh, three plus five plus five nine eleven. The first row, two, two, two plus three. Five. The second row, four plus five. And the third row, five plus six. So zero axis denotes your row-wise operations, and x is equal to one denotes your column-wise operations. Okay. Now uh, the uh, take talk talk about this function. Uh, just the reverse. Sorry. I think just the reverse zero is column wise. I think zero means row wise. Okay, zero means row. Zero denotes node. So it takes row here, row here, and row here. Then do the operations two plus four plus five. So this is row wise. Okay. Okay. So what we wanted here, we wanted mean of the features, right? Every element wise, do we find the mean of those data points? Because we have two dimensional data points, we take the mean of first feature, we take the mean of second feature. That's why we have said the x is equal to zero. So this parameter is very, very useful, and you should know where, when to set x is equal to zero, x is equal to one, because many uh, you will find is coming handy is very, very in very fun, uh, many functions. So np dot s sum is one, np dot mean is one. Okay, so arg max. If I take arg max, let, uh, let me uh, now tell me the output of this. Let me dot arg max a x is equal to one. What what do you think output will be? Zero. So what it will do now? So okay. So give me first uh, output of this. Five comma six. Okay, so okay, so let me do this way first. Okay, what will what do you think our uh, uh, output will be? Eleven. Eleven. Max, maximum entry in A. Six. Six. So this six because it actually gives you the maximum entry at A. What what this will do now? Two one. Index of the maximum entry. So oh, it's going through the serial wise like two, three, four, five, like that. Oh. Okay. What if I set the axis here? Is equal to zero. What What do you think output will be? What do you think output will be now? I think five comma six. It will take row by operation, so it will check two, four, five. What is the maximum? Five. Five. It will take three, five, six. What is maximum? Six. So it will return five comma six. Right. What will if I uh, take arg max here? It will give the indexes. So it will give the index of five and six. So index will be. One and index will be two, right? One comma two. Two comma two. Why two comma two? Two four. Yeah. So all all maximum are coming from five and six. Two comma two, right? What if I set x is equal to one and take the maximum? Now give me the output. Sir, arg max is not clear for me. Yeah, we'll come to arg max. So first, give me the output for this. What it will do? It will take the uh, it will take column by operation. It will take the in the very first row. What is maximum? Three in this three five, maximum, three five six will be the output because it will take the first row. It will give me the maximum here three. Here it will give me the maximum five. It will take the maximum here six. So three five six will be the, will be my will be my. Uh, Output. Okay, so if I do arg max here, arg max for a and x is equal to one. Okay, so what will be output here? So it will give me the index of this entries five, uh, three, five, six. So what is the index of three? Zero, one, one index. What is the index of five? Zero and one. 
index 1. What is the index of 6? 0 and 1. So what do you think output will be? 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1, right? It returns the entries and it, it returns the index at which those entries lie. So three lies at an index 1, right? It, here it lies at index 1. Here it lies at index 1, so right? Think, so that's uh, what our I think I'm repeating that, but uh, uh, the x is equal to 1 in the np dot max it is doing that uh, like uh, it is uh, taking each row and uh, finding the maximum uh, value inside it right and yeah yeah it's, yeah it's taking each row uh, and yeah. if it is x is equal to 0 yeah. then it will uh, go through the column and uh, hmm. find the maximum yes yeah okay sir so when x is equal to 1 it will take only the column index it will one return one, one 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 means yeah it will return the column index okay. and when axis is equal to zero it will return the row index. row index yeah okay okay so yeah that was a good question and uh, this is very very good uh, part of this library you should know whether how to solve x how to set axis parameter Okay, so any other doubt in this? Okay, so if you don't have any doubt, we can close the session. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for the session. Um, can I ask some question about uh, the theory that you explained? Okay, yes, you're of course. Okay, when you are referring to probabilities being set and uh, referring to um, the k plus plus, plus. yeah, mm -hmm. k means plus plus. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a computational uh, algorithm that is also explained somewhere, or uh, that's something which? No, that, in, that in, lecture, in lecture, also sir explained that, uh, or even if you go to the study session, I give some example. Where I've done these calculations. For okay, the, then then I'll go through that. I'll go through that because the lecture was not very clear to me. That's the reason. Okay. Right, so I I will probably upload the videos by to by today or by tomorrow morning. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Okay. okay so thank you everyone for joining. I hope you got that proof. That was a. Uh, I thought initially I will cover it in. 15 minutes and 20 minutes and to go to the work part, but it took more than an hour, but that's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience.